Um, it's great to be here. I didn't ever think I would be near IITNs, but it's great pleasure. Um, so what we do is <coughs> try to make content and learning accessible to all students. I think it's criminal that we don't have, particularly in K-12, because that's where we form the basis of education. That's where we form turn kids on or we turn kids off. And so if we don't have those, you know, availabilities, it's criminal. Think about this. What would Einstein have done if he had Wikipedia? Just imagine that. I'll give you a second to imagine that because I think it speaks volumes to this question, which is, what would our children have done if they only had slate and chalk? This movement, the permanence that came about when we moved from slate, chalk to paper pen, is now has become not just permanence, but it's become collaborative. It's about teachers being able to be producers, not just consumers, students being producers, not just consumers. And that itself is the learning process, to consume and then to be able to put forth what you learned. Without that, I'm not sure education is worth it if you cannot use that for something. We know, we have known for a long time how people learn. There are many, many ways. There's not a single way that people learn. It's all about making those things and, you know, technology and the innovations that have happened in technology should make all these um, different modalities available to all students to learn. So, you know, before this we couldn't do this. We couldn't provide a, a technology enhanced uh, tool which could give you on the moment feedback. I remember when I got my test back a week or a month or two months later, I didn't even remember what the heck I answered. All I wanted to know was how many marks did I get? I mean, I don't know how many of you did differently. I'm sure your IITians, you must have done it differently. <laughs> but, <laughs> and I'm sure if we have this debate, we'll hear all different versions of what, um, what you got back and you uh, got your papers back. Even homework. The learning moment's gone. <laughs> Today, that's possible. We, not, we may not have it you know, it, it very precise or very accurate, but you know what? That's the step towards perfection, to the end goal. So, when I bring out the first version of our software, I'm happy to do that because at least we're taking that first step. Because of our ability to give uh, technology to, you know, poorer schools where their proficiency level was 5%, with the kind of things that we offer, which mean not just text-based, but also uh, different modalities, the interactivity, the, uh, the videos, the exercises, the resources, the books, the teacher, the guidance, their scores have gone up by leaps and bounds. In one year, uh, I'm sorry, in two years, in one of the charter schools, a group of four charter schools, leadership public schools, we found from 5% proficiency, they went up to 92% proficiency. In another big school, public school, the proficiency went up from almost the same amount to over almost 100%. So it's doable today, but we have to give students what they need. You know, the reason that we can give and we have to give all these modalities today is because when you look at what we had to do when we had to learn, it was practice, practice, practice. If I didn't answer my times table, whack, remember that ruler whack? I had to learn it. But what if we do it in a more humane way? I 
mean, if you provide all these different moments, you read it, you watch the video, you interact with it, you, you know, you learn simulations. If we give them all that, I think the students do learn it. They're actually practicing. They don't even know it, but they're actually practicing. It's the same old thing, but in different formats. Color, we can provide that. You know, music, we can provide that. They can, if we let them customize, our system is able to customize teachers, students, and they're doing it. We get students in the classroom in Canada telling us, we have created our own study guides. Over the summer, we get students that have created study guides for other students. We can put up social media where somebody can ask a question in real time and get an answer. Because there may not be anybody in the house, at home, who can actually provide that answer for them. I tell you, when my kids were now uh, in college, I can't answer their questions. So um, it'd, be, you know, it'd be great for all these students to have a safe place where they get in context. So if you think about concept-based learning, we can actually provide in that concept all the modalities, all the questions that they might have, we can answer all that. We can put interactivity so they learn that particular concept. Think about if we were to provide them, um, excuse me, uh, you know, if we could guide them. Let me show you behind uh, our guidance. So what we do is we take a particular domain and we keep breaking it down in all the different subjects that you might have to learn and then keep taking it further down till you get to the final concept that you absolutely have to learn to be success successful. If you want to know, say, what is a cell? How does it divide? How does it uh, create you know, photosynthesis or cellular respiration? Think about all these, and then you can actually you know, join those together by learning different parts of that one at a time. And guess what? If you haven't learned it, we can give you feedback in the moment. In mathematics, it's so much easier to do because it's all based on an answer. Did you get it right? Doesn't matter what process you use to get it right. As long as you can get the answer. If you can provide all that, why not? What stops us? Here's the ability to keep, you know, um, keep answering questions, keep practicing. The questions keep getting harder and harder until you learn. And you know, all this different way of learning can actually even, you know, it excites students. It isn't one all thing. I have to read something. I have to, you know, watch the the, the or uh, read the illustration and get it all back in the format that the teacher wants it. Now, with innovations, innovations that have happened over a long, long time, we're actually standing on the shoulders of giants, as Newton said. So, you know, we can do this at this point. So, we in CK12 committed to offering individualized learning, concept-based learning, self-guided, instant feedback, multimodality, and on top of that, free and open. Think about insulin. Frederick Banting was the gentleman who discovered insulin. What would have happened if he had said, no, I'm going to patent this? Right? Think about Tim Berners-Lee's, the hyperlinks. What would have happened if they were run not free? Think about Wikipedia. When we talk about sustainability, does it have to be commercial, at least for education, at least for K-12? I ask you that question. And that's an important question, and that's really where you know, our commitment is that we want to make things accessible in every format, whether it's print format if you don't have a computer, or if it's you do have a computer, and don't have high, you know, access to it, 